you have to read this book because you too have to experience the distress that I went through. Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking about the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. I wanted to say first right off the bat there are going to be spoilers in the sense of I'm going to be talking about who the couples are and like who gets with who and also the tropes in the book. Now obviously I'm not going to be like in chapter 14 so and so did x y and z. It's going to be more like one bed trope enemies to lovers, workplace romance, like, I don't know why I'm dancing, but like that kind of situation. So if you don't want to know anything about the books, not sure why you're here, love you for it though. I'm going to tell you right now, the order of these books is going to go flawless, heartless, powerless, reckless, and hopeless. So if that's all you wanted to know here, that's all you wanted to figure out was what, how I should read them, should I really read them in order? There you go. We're gonna hop into a little bit about these books, what their tropes are, who the characters are in the sense of like, this is their career. I'm gonna give you a general synopsis of these books and we're just gonna see how that goes. Honestly, I don't, I've never done one of these videos before, so I'm excited to do them. So if it's a little bit jumpy, if it's a little bit, maybe not the best flow, I'm learning and thank you for learning with me. So the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver is going to be an interconnected standalone series, meaning that this series doesn't flow like a regular series would. They are individual books that can be read on their own without having read any of the other books. They have their own couple, their own plot, but I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend slash I'm begging you to read them in order that I mentioned earlier that I'm going to be talking about now. These books are so amazing and I truly believe you only like get the full value of these books, of these characters, of this entire series if you read them in order and if you just experience them in the way that they were written. I don't know if that makes sense but it truly like I'm begging you please read them in order and I know you're gonna say Ellie some of the books in this series aren't my cup of tea. I'm not a big friends to lovers girly. I don't really like enemies to lovers. I don't like hockey players. I don't know and to that I say I hear you but I'm ignoring you because you need to read them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I'm not a big Friends to Lovers girly either, but I still sat there and I still read the Friends to Lovers and I still enjoyed it. Was it my favorite? No. But am I glad that I read it because of the next book? Yeah. So they're interconnected standalone. You can read them in any order, but don't. <laughs> it is a small town country romance as well. So you're going to get all those good small town vibes. You're going to get fun characters. You're gonna get like a tight kind of community and it's gonna be a lot of fun. You're also gonna get some good spice, some good banter, and some tension. And when I say spice, I mean you're gonna hear it, you're gonna see it, you're gonna you're gonna know all of the things. So please read responsibly. That's all I'm gonna say on that matter. <laughs> the main kind of situation is we have in Chestnut Springs, we have the Eaton Farm, okay? And the Eaton brothers are going to be kind of like our main boys, even though we have like some other ones, two other ones that are like connected in. And so that's what's going on there. So I have to give an honorable mention to my favorite man. Well, not actually, but like one of my very many favorite mans, Harvey. He is the dad of the Eaton brothers. And he just adds the most amazing comic relief and just not even relief, but just like comedy in every single book and some of the things he says you're just gonna like stare and you're gonna be like did you really did, what what is your brain doing and it's just so funny so honorable mention to my man Harvey I see you I hear you I love you so with that we are going to hop right in to the tropes of these books starting off strong we have the first book in the series we have Flawless by Elsie Silver now these characters will always hold a very special place in my heart because they were the first ones that I read. And this book, I would argue, has one of the most like hilarious outlandish plot shenanigans that's gonna happen. So the tropes for this book, we are gonna have one bed, we're gonna have a workplace romance, we're gonna have forced proximity, we are going to have a bull rider, and we are going to have an enemies to lovers rival-esque situation. So this book follows Rhett and Summer. Rhett is a bull rider and Summer works for his like management company to make sure that his image is good, make sure he keeps his sponsorships, all that fun shenanigans. And a video gets leaked of Rhett saying something that gets him in some hot water with some of his sponsorships, which is ridiculous what he says. Like, 
but that whole concept is just gonna make you giggle throughout the entire book because you're like why but it's so much fun I'm not gonna ruin that moment for you and so Summer gets tasked with kind of babysitting Rhett while his season for bull riding ends so they're gonna road trip together they are going to spend like every waking hour together to make sure that Rhett is on his best behavior and doesn't lose any more sponsorships this book is so much fun it's so good like I don't even know like what to even say about it because I don't want to get into any of the spoilers so this part's gonna be kind of fast I think um but it's so much fun I love these characters and like there's something about a grumpy cowboy who doesn't not even grumpy but like begrudging cowboy that you're there who doesn't really like you who still does like very gentlemanly things that just catch you completely off guard that is so much fun in this book the next book in this series is going to be heartless now i have two copies well i have two copies of every book because i have them on my kindle and in hard paperback formation these are the new covers that have been traditionally published and then these are the covers that were independently published by elsie um, before the series got picked up to be traditionally published you're gonna see these covers for the rest of the books but they kind of the ones you can buy now look like this. I managed to grab books two through five in this format, so that's what I have. Um, so if you see the switch up, you're like, what's going on? That's what's happening. Heartless. This is my favorite book in the entire series. I love this book with my entire heart. And is it one of the more taboo-esque romances? Yes, but it's so good and it's so amazing. And I have been gushing about it in my wrap-ups. I gushed about it in my Ye favorite books like book year tag situation and I'm gonna gush about it here. So the tropes of this book are single dad and nanny which at first you're gonna be like what? But when you read it you're gonna be like yes and I'm, and I'm gonna be cheering with you. It's gonna be great. We have opposites attract, forced proximity, we have a little bit of an age gap. I believe the age gap is like seven years so it's nothing crazy but there is that aspect to it and of course it's small town country romance and this one in particular takes place a lot on the Eaton family ranch so it's a lot of fun. There's also the sweetest, sweetest child in this book that you are just going to fall head over heels in love with. So this book is about Cade and Willa and Cade is in desperate need of a nanny after the one that he was typically using to watch his child is unavailable. They kind of stumble upon each other. Willa is, if you read the first book, Summer's best friend. And so Summer kind of sets Willa up for this job because Willa's a bartender, but her brother who owns the bar that she bartends at is no longer, like he's closed for renovations, can no longer kind of employ her. So she's bored. She's like, what am I going to do? And she takes on this nannying job. <laughs> the two are, of course, then in forced proximity. A beautiful relationship ensues, like the most beautiful relationship. I love these characters so much and I am so happy that they are together. The next book is Powerless. Now this is the third book in the series. And this book follows our hockey player and our ballerina. So it's gonna be Jasper and Salone's story. The tropes in this book, it's gonna be a sports romance. You're not gonna, you're gonna get like sports romance like vibes, but you're not gonna be like really in the sports, if that makes any sense. It's childhood friends to lovers. There is a road trip in it, and there is a lot of family drama in this one with Salone's family that I just wanna let you know about. Um, I know that's not really a trope but it's very prevalent in the story so just want to let you guys know so jasper has been hopelessly in love with sloan for years and sloan has been hopelessly in love with jasper and the two just cannot figure out a way to like communicate this to each other sloan ends up in a bit of a sticky situation where she's about to marry someone else something happens and jasper ends up rescuing her and yanking her out of that wedding like letting her escape runaway bride style like they are gone in the dust in the trail in the wind um so the book kind of goes from there it's a lot of fun you definitely learn a lot about jasper which is a lot of fun if you've been reading the other books like i told you to i think par harvey in this book is particularly unhinged which is always fun it's always fun the next book in the series is going to be reckless by elsie silver now this one is the one i feel like powerless and this one are the ones that have the most controversial tropes to a sense or not controversial but I feel like a lot of people don't like to read about friends to lovers and then this one is surprise pregnancy and before you click away before you're like I'm not gonna read that book you have to read this book because you too have to experience the distress that I went through <laughs> between Theo who is Rhett's protege for bull riding and Winter who is Summer's sister and it is a surprise pregnancy 
one night stand opposite grumpy sunshine this book is one of my favorites in the series but it also caused me the most stress and you have to read it to find out theo and winter 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 is an interesting character and i wasn't expecting to like her as much as i did when i read her book which like really props to elsie for that one that's all you get you need to read this one but you need to read this one after reading what is it the other books in the series the last book in the chestnut spring series that we have it is hopeless and this is beau's story Bo and Bailey, which is fun with the double bees. Bo is an ex-military man and Bailey is a bartender and she's also a bit of the town outcast because her family is not very liked in the town. Her brothers and her dad have definitely caused some town problems and are just not on the best path and Bailey kind of gets the backhand and backlash of people's opinions of her. So the tropes in this book are going to be fake engagement kind of situation like it's kind of like an, an engagement of convenience of sorts there is an age gap and it is quite a large age gap and I would say that this was one where the age gap I wasn't as pleased with in a sense um but it wasn't anything bad it just I don't know I, I wasn't the biggest fan of this book I'm gonna be honest the only thing that really saved this book for me was the last chapter and the epilogue and if you read the epilogue you know why but this this book wasn't bad it just wasn't my favorite in this series and i wasn't a huge fan of Bo. anyway we have ex-military man tortured as hero age gap small town forced proximity because she ends up living with him um for reasons i will not get into bailey is struggling to get out of chestnut springs and this town because no one will hire her and she's not making enough money in order to kind of save herself in a sense out of this town so Bo and Bailey enter a fake relationship in order for Bo in order for Bailey to kind of prove to Bo that her life would really change if she had a different last name because the Eatons are town royalty and if she was to take on that name her life would be easier in that kind of sense so they enter the kind of like this fake endeavor and like Bo needs someone because Bo is really alone and that's kind of what this book's about. I know we definitely didn't end on my favorite book. I love this series so much. It genuinely is such an amazing book series. It has helped me so much in my life. I read it during the deep dark depths of my finals burnout death situation. <laughs> like I think any university student really knows when you're like approaching finals and like they're hard finals um you're not thriving so this just this book series brought some light into my life so many of these characters have such a home in my heart so i hope that i've done them justice in explaining kind of this series what's it about all of that things the tropes the characters and hopefully this was a good video i have no idea i love you guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel and i will see you guys in the next video have a lovely day bye everybody